Well now for the final uh, painting of this series, when I'm going to do an acrylic on board, I've got a nice frame to go with it later, so it's on MDF, primed with white emulsion, I've drawn it on, ready to go, and I'm going to do this final scene of the camels in front of the pyramids, <laughs> archetype scene I suppose, uh, just for fun, and uh, it'll show you uh, how I can bring out this um, atmosphere with the impressionist technique, because I do want to get this feeling of a really hot day, still, placid, blue sky, haze in the background, and I want to get this feeling of warmth and heat coming through and these camels just meandering about in the sand and the dust. My usual equipment of acrylics, my filbert brushes mainly and some rounds, and my stabert palette that I've made myself for the acrylics, a mixing palette, some water in a jar, and of course my composite photographs. Okay, I've chosen a, a medium sized filbert here, about a half inch. I could use a larger one to cover this, but I want to build up in gradual layers of colours and I usually start from around my horizon line because that's about the mid-tone of the painting usually. In this case we want to have a very warm, misty effect going on back here and uh, I think I'm going to use, obviously I'm going to start with white as my body colour, as a filler colour. I'm going to add a little bit of magenta to that. It's a fair amount of it because I'm going to need a fair amount for this. And I'm going to mix it into bands of colour as it comes across. I'm going to add a little bit now of chrome yellow to that. So magenta and then chrome yellow and white. Just giving a lovely warm, very, very strong colour. I want to just take it down a fraction with a bit of yellow ochre. I'm going to add some other colours over this, but it seems very dark against the white background at first, the white primer, but that's just the thing, it leaves us then room to go much lighter later and put highlights in if we need them and make the clouds really shine as well. So we'll put in this layer of this mixture then, of white, chrome yellow, a little bit of the magenta and um, some, lem some yellow ochre, which gives me this warm background. I'm going to bring the cooling to in a moment. That's the only thing with acrylics is that um, I've got against them really. Although they're fast drying, that also can work against you as well because you don't have time to blend them really. That's a nice smooth board I'm painting on this MDF. It paints slightly over our drawing because that way we don't get a halo. It would be quite a nice one to do in oils actually this one but I've decided to go for the uh, acrylic rather than the oils in this case so that I can have much quicker um, drying and blending. I don't want this beautiful effect of broken colour. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow ochre as I come lighter up here. I'm going to gradually work the sky up in layers and glazes and blending of and feathering of colours. Might seem a strange way to start. You might think I'm painting a sunset, but hopefully you'll see how it all works out. I'm going to be putting very pale blues into this later as well. That's another thing with MDF is it's fairly absorbent. Um, even with the primer on, so it sucks in this paint quite quickly and nicely, meaning that I've got um, a nice ground to work over. It's used all the paint up that I've mixed, I'm just mixing it with thinner with water now just to glaze over this white and lose the stark effect. Now we've got to start working up with the colours. I'm going to come back into this mixture that I've got. So I've got a little bit of the magenta, but this time I'm going to put a bit of lemon yellow with it, to make it a bit cooler. So I've got a much more lighter yellow glaze going over the top and linking all of this together. Just short strokes, blending it through. Not often I use lemon yellow in a sky because um, 
it tends to be too too bright. I tend to use yellow ochre far more. You can see how we can gradually layer up these colours. We are now starting to get the feeling that we wanted of the. We need to start making a slightly purple grey mix. I'm going to take some cobalt and white. little touch of the magenta into that. I don't want to make it too dark yet. Especially here this side, it gets lighter the other side slightly. And here again, just blending it on very very thinly. Just giving it a, a misty broken colour, grey. Now we can gradually start to bring in the blues. We were talking about blues earlier, we'll take a bit of cobalt because we've got the cool and the warmth, we've got the heat of the day but we've also got this sort of misty coolness in the distance more. As I say it still seems a bit dark at the moment because of the white next to it but as I paint out those colours, get in the stronger colours, it'll make more and more sense. As we come up we get stronger with the blue and then you start to see the difference between them, how I've played the cool blues against the warm blues. I still am and I'm still going to add these cool and warm blues together, building them up. Give some white as the body colour again, get back in with the white as the body colour. Always keep a little bit of warmth in the blue. Here's actually well, start to really this up now. Brushing it well in, blending these edges together. Different technique altogether, so using oils or watercolour. Gradually controlling how much light and dark and how much cool and warm we have. Getting this mottled effect of the sky. So I'm really starting to pile in the colour now. My brush strokes are tending to go mainly diagonally across the board because that is the way these clouds are built up. Magenta to it to start to make these very pale clouds, warm clouds that are just scudding over. But now, hopefully, you start to see these glazes working better and how the cool greys and blues and warms are showing through one another slightly. blue green into it now just to get that pink line a bit more back there and soften it down a fraction as well take it back a little now hopefully that's going to work a lot better when I get the darker colors in of the pyramids and so on so a really delicately worked up sky various surfaces hasn't been tickled I right, will leave that now and we'll go on to the pyramids and let's see if we can start to make a difference there because they're going to be a slight change. That's the tone here is almost the same but it's just slightly warmer. So I'm going to take some yellow ochre there with my very light blue. bit of chrome, Let's try it again, that's better, a little bit of magenta, I have a slightly greener tint to it yet, and 
because this paint is tending to lift just slightly again, um, it'll need a couple of coats I suspect. The first thing is to get rid of this white board as much as we can so we can compare tones and colours and see them correctly because the white's just throwing you out so much it's very hard to see wood for trees if you like. You can just get a smaller brush because um, you need a bit more sharper edged in places there. Right now this darker colour there. What have we got? We've got a little bit of blue Warmth again into that. Let's see if that's about right. Use a small brush. And it can take a couple of coats at times to get the colour you want and build it up and get the feeling of the place because it, it is slightly illustrative this painting. It isn't just a, an effect of light or or a turner, we're going to go a little bit further. We can put a light blue glaze over that shortly and pinky blue glaze and take that back a bit further. But it's only as we do these colours compared once to another that the others are going to seem anything like right because we have to have the warm against the cool and the stronger tones against the lighter tones and then textures as well to really get the effect of this to work. It dries fairly quickly, we can get a second coat on then. Quite a textured edge to that, the stone work is not absolutely level. It will also give us texture to the surface as well. Now I know there are obviously easier ways of painting little details over it, but that's not what we're about in this case. I'm going to deliberately touch in all of these little bits and pieces to get the feeling of this as I want it. Now this is my ultramarine and a little bit of burnt sienna which is giving me my darks so I can have some nice warm darks here in the foreground. Remember with shadows the, the brighter the sunlight the bigger the difference between light and darks so our light and darks become much darker and much lighter. We'll leave that for the moment and work our way down still further. We'll start doing the background of the desert now. Back to my slightly larger brush. I'm not using a very big brush for this. And we're going to go a lot warmer here now. So I'm going to take my white, the yellow ochre, the distance. Let's just try that out that I can start to see what my colours should be. I'm going to bring a bit of chrome yellow into it here as it comes closer to us to make the sand even warmer. Colours over it. So this isn't the final colour, this isn't the correct colour even. It's just gradually getting a bit warmer to give me get rid of the white so I can actually judge what's going on. We can still see the drawing, the paint is very transparent, I can still see my drawing underneath this. Get rid of the white and we can see where we've got to go with it all. There we go, now we can start to see wood for trees, we can start to see what we've got here. Right, we'll let that dry off a bit. Now, continue, go back to the sky and we'll uh, just look at how we might start to improve that a little bit into the distance. It wants to glow a bit more, so we'll add a bit more yellow to that. That's better. Now for this one, the same. That's something we can do very quickly, of course, with the acrylics, is this glazing, which we can't do as easily with the oils until they dry build up and up and up because there's a lot to a painting like this okay I could simplify it but I really just want to play with all of these lovely details and colours let's really see if we can find these subtle changes between these tones that give it this just beautiful feeling of distance
And that's another thing that there, there's a connection through, it sinks back. So we have to keep adding um, slightly stronger colours here and there to, to build it up and get back to where we were. Which makes it more coherent because it tends to link in, but equally you, you lose the light a bit. Make them a fraction lighter still so that when they do sink back they, they still show. Make a shimmering effect of broken colour and give us what we hope. Now head back to the other brush. And as you add these colours you then find the values change around the place and you've got to make changes on the more major items yet again. But no worry, it'll all work out in the end I have using more burnt sienna into it now amongst the cadmium orange and the raw sienna to really start to get some warmth going, going forward into these shapes. I'm not playing with the purples and other deeper shadow colours yet. We'll um, just build up these warms first of all. But I will want to get rid of uh, all this white still. I need to lose it. So I do need to start to give it a coat of colour, at least just to lose. Even if it's very transparent at the moment, so I can still see the, camel, the drawing of the camels underneath, it will give me at least some mid-tones to work within. So it might seem strange painting your camel in grey, but if it uh, just as a mid-tone that we need to used to get rid of the white and have it just glowing underneath and that's useful. Now just begin to see where the camels even are. But it wasn't that easy before. Just start to show you how, when I do start to bring up these tones, how the thing will start to come together. and start making brighter colours for the sand. So you really want this to stand out. Because the general idea is to try and get as much colour and light, feeling of warmth into this as we can without it being ridiculous. We've got the basic background colours in now and it's time to start working up some of the details. So uh, I've got my sponge ready and a uh, nice little sea sponge here and we're going to texture on with that. Both the lights and the darks. We'll start with the darks. I'm going to make a, a purple colour here. Another nice colour. And to overdo it, we'll just take a damp sponge and get it onto the edge of the texture now let's see if we can carefully place and we're twisting the sponge because what we don't want is a pattern we don't want it to look as if uh, we're making a pattern on here 
and that's starting to make the, the background look softer because we have more texture in the foreground it will make the background seem slightly smoother of course I've got to lower the easel just a fraction to be able to go where the easel holds the painting a bit more blue in there I think so I'll take it a bit darker I'll take a Prussian now and add some Prussian to it as well that just gives us the texturing of the stones and the little lumps in the desert Right, now I've got to do the opposite and uh, make some lighter colour. OK, now we'll try a little bit of the lighter colour with the sponge. And overdo it just. Into this foreground I want to take some of those darker colours and Mixed early, put a bit more brown with it, and do a little bit of um, burnt sienna now. And uh, just make some of these foreground colours a bit darker as well. Plus, we'll work into the details in this a little bit more now with the warmer colours. These textures are quite important because they're going to make this mistiness in the background and more enhanced. And maybe we've got a little bit of a purple shadow going on. A little bit more just underneath the piece themselves. So I'll make a little bit more move. We'll just get a little bit more shadow happening with the blue. Underneath the uh, this will bring out the yellows more, you see. If I if I use more of this mauve here into the shadows and things, well it'll it'll make the yellow seem just a little bit more. And subtle adjustments of, of cools and warms to try and make the thing alive and, and sing a bit in colour. Quite surprising how much colour there is at times. Something to and how much one colour will enhance another. need to go down to a smaller brush now because I've got a few more details. We've got to start getting into the finer details now of the painting. Take a little round. A few little bits of dark on that because we've got some very distant camels over here that I want to have in right over in the distance. Somebody on a horse here for instance. Really, it's just these little bits of distance that little touches like this can help to, to make this painting now and give it a, <coughs> a bit more space and atmosphere. The edge of the frame will come in there slightly, but I just want a little bit of something coming in that corner. And these little bits of blue should help to link the blue from the, the sky down into it. I think we're probably about there now without going too much into detail and too photographic. I'll just touch up a few of these little highlights in the background here. I'm trying to give a feeling of space here so the more little details that we have like this back here are going to lead the eye in and give us a bit more space and texture. And it's these last details that can just help to bring the picture together. Maybe just get the forms a little bit more, more sunlight just coming across them. And there we are, I think. We'll leave that at that.